Well, our next guest thinks President Obama is earning some credit with voters by showing a commitment to driving down the debt of this country. He calls the 2011 budget deal reached in Washington a game changer. We'll join now by John Taylor, Stanford University professor and former undersecretary for the Treasury uh, in the international affairs area. Uh, welcome to In Business. So good to have you back on the program. 2011, that up to the last minute budget deal that was brokered gives you hope. Are you that much of an optimist that you do believe a credible debt reduction plan will be in place within the next year? Well, I think that was a start on it because before that we were seeing increases in spending in 2011 compared to 2010. And after the deal, it was a decrease in spending. So that's a that's a game changer in that sense. But it's you know it's like a couple yards when you're down three touchdowns. So there's a long way to go. No question about it. Mm -hmm. well, well, certainly uh, those midterm elections at least uh, underscored concern about spending. But that decision making process is it seems to be quite a painful one on the political front. You know, for you, where you stand, what defines a credible debt reduction plan? Well, first of all, it's starting with doing something now, and they've, they've begun to do that. And next, to lay out uh, a strategy for reducing spending as a share of GDP, and I say come back to levels we saw in 2007. And that would enable us to balance the budget without increasing taxes. And I think that's really what America needs now, is a, is a lower deficit, uh, reduced growth of debt, and to do that in a way that doesn't raise taxes, and that strategy is is there and doable if we can just get our political hands around it. But how do you cut the deficit without increasing revenue from somewhere? I mean, it, taxes seem to be the, the most logical place to look. Well, the, the fact is, if you just take spending down to where it was in 2007, as a share of GDP, and that means spending growth, as a share of GDP, that was about 19.5% of GDP in 2007. And our revenues should cover that pretty closely without increasing taxes. Uh, revenues will come back as the economy recovers. That always happens. And so it's pretty close to balance if we just do that. And I don't think that should be so hard, quite frankly. We are doing okay in 2007. I think we could even do better, but let's just hold that as a goal, in which case we can make this work without raising taxes. And I think we should try to do that because higher taxes obviously are not good for economic growth. You know, up until a few months ago, it, it seemed like the consensus uh, in Washington, or at least certainly of the administration, was that the economy is still in, in such a tenuous place that we need some form of stimulus to help encourage growth. At the same time, now you have have this consensus that austerity needs to happen in some form. How do you make the two concepts coexist? Well, I think it was it was very important to make that change because there had been claims that we needed more stimulus when the stimulus hadn't worked, by, at least by my calculations. And so I think the change, part of the game change, is to recognize we had to get started with this now. But it doesn't have to be so austere, basically. It has to be done more gradually. And, and we can do that in a way that will increase growth and lower unemployment. So the, the key here is to make it gradual and credible and transparent. And I think we're beginning to see progress. After all, the, the first budget that uh, the president submitted in February has completely mm -hmm. been thrown away. He's, he's replaced it with a new budget, uh, Budget 2. And it is it involves less spending than the previous one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bring it down far enough, but that's that's a change. Uh, and for you, credible means cutting Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. It means reforming Medicaid and Medicare, uh, so that the growth of those two programs uh, comes down to levels that are manageable. It, there's, we're not talking about cuts here, and we're not talking about. Uh, anything that's draconian that I can see. You remember, bringing spending back to where it was in 2007 mm -hmm. is where you want to think about this as going. We want to continue our conversation with John Taylor, Stanford University professor and former Undersecretary for International Affairs at the Treasury. Uh, thanks for sticking with us through the break.
Um, sure. Let's pick up. I mean, back in 1996, that's the last time that we did see a real budget showdown during the Clinton administration, and it did at that time raise the concern of ratings agencies like Moody's, who said, you know what, we may have to downgrade outlook for the United States. Yesterday, S&P fired the shot that panicked the markets. How different uh, is this warning about the credit outlook for the United States this time around? Well, I think it's more serious because the debt is larger and it's projected to really become un unsustainable uh, at this point. So I think they outlined some things that people knew already. Uh, they didn't point to a showdown as a c concern. They pointed to the concern that the debt is just going to explode if we don't have a showdown, if you like. So I think it's very important in the next few months to, to recognize this as a wake-up call and uh, to make the changes. I hope it helps because we do need to make these adjustments. And yet, last time around in the 90s, we did see uh, that the Treasury markets reflect real concern. I was speaking to Austin Goolsby just yesterday who pointed to historically uh, low averages uh, in, in Treasuries right now and saying there isn't panic there as yet. Uh, is that the right way to be reading the markets right now? I don't think so because we have low rates. Uh, the economy is is very weak compared to to uh, 1996. Uh, we have unemployment that's very high. The economy is is growing, unfortunately, too sluggishly to re reduce that unemployment rapidly. So there's r many reasons for low rates, but people are concerned. Rates have begun to move up. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it in in uh, the concerns reflected in many areas. Concerns about the dollar. So yes, it's a concern, but it doesn't have to happen overnight. It could happen later, it could happen gradually, but, but people should be concerned about it. Uh, and, and I think that's what we're beginning to see. That's why there's so much interest. Again, the president's had to send in a completely new budget from what he did in February. That's, I don't think that's happened since the 1970s where mm -hmm. a president has really just it just changed his budget in midstream. So that shows you how people concerned are. Should, the, should the Fed, Fed wind down its support program in June? I think it, it should. I think it should do it in a, a, a gra again a gradual way, a, a transparent way, outline its strategy for doing it in advance. But yeah, yeah. I think it's about time to, to be clear about that. All right, J John Taylor, thanks so much for giving us your perspective.